Welcome back to The Big Picture. My guest, Dick Martucci, we're talking all things political and elections. Um, what, uh, Vic, what do you think about the national uh, picture in terms of the blue wave and whether or not uh, Republicans will lose majorities in the House or the Senate? Well, it's interesting. Let's start with the United States Senate. Um, there is no blue wave uh, when it comes to the United States Senate. In fact, um, I believe that the Republicans will pick up a minimum of two seats mm -hmm. and maybe as many as, as four or five. Um, when you look at the, uh, the recent polling, um, uh, you've got um, the, uh, the Republicans are going to pick up the, uh, the seat in Missouri, uh, the McCaskill seat. They're going to pick up the seat in North Dakota, the, the Hike Camp seat. Um, the, uh, uh, the race in Florida between uh, Bill Nelson and Rick Scott, the, uh, the, the current governor of Florida, is now a dead heat. Uh, Scott had a four or five point lead a few weeks ago. Um, the, uh, uh, and, and then there's some outliers that could provide uh, some surprises. Um, the Michigan race uh, for the United States Senate, Debbie Stabenow, the, uh, the incumbent there, um, she once had a 15-point lead. Her lead is now down to six points. Mm -hmm. So that's trending uh, strongly in favor of the Republican. In Minnesota, the Al Franken seat. Uh, Western New Yorkers will know the name Housley, Karn Housley, Phil Housley, the, the Sabres coach's wife. Uh, state senator in Minnesota has closed the gap significantly. Um, with Tina Smith, who's the uh, uh, lieutenant governor in Minnesota. So Minnesota could go. Um, the New Jersey race, Bob Menendez uh, in New Jersey, uh, the Republican candidate has made uh, his, his close significantly in that race. Um, on the flip side, Arizona, the John McCain seat, um, the polls show a statistical dead heat out there. And um, in fact, the Democrat has made, uh, made some hen head headway in the, in, in the last week or so. So that seat could flip. Um, but I don't see a scenario where the Democrats take control of the Senate. On the House side, um, you know, the Republicans started out with an awful hand, 43 incumbent Republican House members retired this year. Uh, so they're starting out playing defense in 43 districts. Um, and the Democrats have outraised the Republicans in, uh, financially, which is, which is an anomaly. That doesn't typically happen. So um, just looking at um, all of the polling, um, right now uh, there's 30 seats that are a toss-up. Um, out of those 30 seats, 28 are held by Republicans. Mm -hmm. So the likelihood is, is that the Democrats will take control of the House. But I don't think it's going to be um, a significant win if they do. I can see them picking up 24 or 25 seats. Mm -hmm. They need 23 to take the majority. Um, but it's entirely possible that there, you know, we could all be surprised on election night. Conventional wisdom is the Democrats are going to take control of the House. It's not a slam dunk anymore. Uh, in light of what happened in 2016 with the Trump election, all the polls, all the polls virtually said that, uh, that Clinton was going to win. And in, in hindsight, I think a lot of uh, people who wanted to vote for Trump basically snookered the polls. Well, <laughs> let me, let because you and I had this conversation <laughs> right. after, the, after the 2016 election. Um, the national pundits want you to believe that all the polls were wrong. The polls were not wrong. Mm -hmm. The polls nailed it. But the problem is, is that the polls were all national polls. Mm -hmm. And the national polls said that Hillary Clinton would win by two to three points. Well, guess what? She won the popular vote by two and a half percentage points. But not the, electoral the polls colors. were dead right. Mm -hmm. But what was happening was, and, and I said this, I, I think, on this station, um, was that if you looked at the individual states, places like Michigan and Ohio and Pennsylvania and Florida, um, <laughs> and Wisconsin, that Trump was closing the gap. And in polling, it's not the number today. You know, who, who's going to win today? It's the trend. And all those states were trending towards Donald Trump. The wild card was, did Trump have the infrastructure to get his vote out? That was the question. And in hindsight, he did. So this notion that the polls were wrong just isn't true. The pundits have to say that because they can't admit that they were wrong. <laughs> Well, you think that then that the, the polls 
are fairly accurate, do you think? You oh, absolutely, know? absolutely. And, and, and the polling that I'm looking at tells me that um, there is no blue wave. Um, the blue wave is more of a, a, of a ripple than a wave. And um, that uh, it is likely that the Democrats will take control of the House, but if they do, they'll have a maybe one, two, three seat majority. Um, but the United States Senate is going to remain firmly uh, in, in, in control of the, uh, the Republicans, and I believe they're going to make gains. Now, in light of the fact, and, the, and I kind of mentioned this at the beginning, the country is doing better, uh, the, the economy is doing better, the, the employment rate is better uh, in, in terms of world politics. We're a little more respected. We're getting uh, better trade relations. Right. There's a lot of positives going on. That, well, country. that's right. There's a lot of. I mean, the, the historical average is is that the the party in power in the White House loses an average of 25 seats. Mm -hmm. um, now, when you look back at 2010, uh, President Obama's first midterm election. Um, interestingly. President Obama's approval rating at this time in 2010 was 44 percent. You know what Donald Trump's approval rating is today? I think it was. 44 percent. Okay. <laughs> so they're in exactly the same position. The difference is, is the fundamentals weren't there um, in 2010. The economy was still in a recession. We're, we were coming off of the, um, uh, the Congress vote, uh, passing um, the Affordable Health Care Act without a single Republican vote. Um, and the Democrats lost 63 seats in that, in that midterm election. Uh, I don't see that happening here to the Republicans um, because you have a strong economy, because you have strong fundamentals. Um, and so I don't think the president is going to be a drag on, on the election. Um, if the election is a base election, uh, Donald Trump's um, popularity among his base could prove helpful to the Republicans. So I think in the end, the Republicans are going to make, maintain control of the Senate, increase their numbers, mm -hmm. and I think um, they'll probably lose control of the House, uh, but it won't be by much. And I wouldn't be surprised if they pull the upset and they maintain control in the House as well. Okay, we've got a bit, about a minute left. Um, just where do you think the uh, New York State uh, Senate and uh, uh, legislature is going? Well, in, in the state Senate, the, the Republicans have a, a slim one-seat majority, um, and that's with a, uh, a Democrat from, from New York City, Simka Felder, uh, caucusing with the Republicans. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in, in numbers, Democrat versus Republican, the Democrats actually have been in the majority. Um, so the, the, the Republicans only have a one-seat majority. Uh, there are four Republican districts that are open seats this year because of retirements. So similar to what the Republicans are dealing with in the House, they're playing defense. Um, they have to pull an inside straight to maintain control in the, in, the, in the state Senate. They have to win every one of those races. Um, now, if you had asked me this question a month ago, I would say it was a slam dunk that the Senate was going to flip. But everything I'm hearing is that a lot of races downstate, particularly on Long Island, mm -hmm. that um, everybody assumed the Democrats were going to pick up are now very tight races. So it could go either way um, next week. But um, I think it's going to be difficult for the Republicans to maintain the majority. And what that means for upstate New York is significant. Mm -hmm. um, there will be one majority senator west of Syracuse, and that's Senator mm -hmm. Tim Kennedy of Buffalo. Um, and that'll have implications for upstate New York. Yeah, that's not, uh, not, not a good sign. Uh, well, and we're used to that. <laughs> well, I think uh, we're out of time now for, uh, for this uh, big picture. Uh, interesting, we'll be, uh, we'll be talking a lot about this after the election. Uh, remember to go out and vote. Your vote counts. Uh, my thanks to Vic Martucci, my guest, and uh, thank you for watching WBBZ. Thanks so much for watching The Big Picture. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.